Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. Today I'm in Grafton, Massachusetts at the Grafton Flea Market. Uh, this is the biggest I've ever seen it here. I have lots of high hopes. Let's see if I can find some comic books. Hey, how you doing? Doing alright, how about you? Doing good. That's the second print. Yeah, second printing. It's not bad actually. Number one, that's cool. Star Wars in here. That's cool. That's neat. What do we got? We got a Northborough Comic and Card Show, July 8th, 9 to 1. Cool. At the Trinity Church in Northborough. I'll try to make it. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Mark, nice to meet you. Mark. Hmm, I've never seen that before. Okay guys, I did find some comic books here that are pretty cool. I'm actually quite happy I found them. 
I also made some really great connections for some future like comic book shows, collectible shows, things like that, which is always great to come here. So uh, yeah, now I'm really going home and I'll show you guys what I found. So there you go. That was the Grafton Flea Market in Grafton, Massachusetts. It was actually the second flea market of the morning for me. I had just come from the Rietta Flea Market in Hubberston about an hour away. Realized I had more time, had to check out this one as well. That's why when you heard me sign off in that footage there, I said, now I'm really going home because I had already said I was going home an hour before, changed my mind. You never know, guys. But I'm happy I checked it out because like I said in the footage, it really was the biggest I've ever seen it there. This is usually a pretty small flea market and this place was absolutely packed. Somewhat ironically though, this was the least amount of comic books I'd ever found there. I only found one vendor with comic books worth looking at and you saw pretty much all those comic books in the footage. Um, still, I thought I got a pretty good little stack of comic books, but I think it's because I had gone to both flea markets and I had a whole box full. It felt like I got more comic books than I did. When I got home and separated them out, I realized I got a grand total of four comic books at this show. So this is going to be a pretty quick video, guys. Uh, perfect for a Friday upload, similar to my lunch money, lunch break videos where I go out at lunchtime and, you know, hunt for half an hour or so, except it was brunch time. So this is like a brunch money comics brunch break. We'll call it that. Um, so I'll show you guys the books in a second, but I also mentioned that the best part about going to shows like this uh, in flea markets and talking with people is that you find out about stuff. Whenever I see someone with comic books or collectible toys, I always strike up a conversation, guys. You find out really cool things about a lot of times where these people have stores or they have events coming up, and that's exactly what happened. So I'm gonna mention a couple things to uh, for those of you who are local to Massachusetts, you might wanna check out this summer. So the first one I wanna mention is a comics and card show that the guy I got the comic books from told me about. His name is Mark. He's from Wicked East Coasters Comics, Cards, and Collectibles, and they are having this comics and card show in North Borough, Massachusetts on July 8th. So I'll make sure to put information down in the description. If you're in Massachusetts or in the area of uh, North Borough, absolutely check this one out. Uh, the other one uh, I found out about was from a guy named Harry. So uh, Harry had a whole bunch of cool collectible toys. He's actually the one that had that awesome Marvel Bicentennial calendar you saw towards the end of the footage. I should have got it, guys. It was really cool. I didn't. Uh, really good guy. We were talking about vintage toys and comic books, and he started giving me lots of stuff. He started telling me about all these cool events coming up. Um, so Harry's from uh, Harry Hobbies and Collectible Toys down in Norton, Massachusetts, and all through the summer on Saturdays, they have a sidewalk sale in front of the store. So that happens every single weekend. They also have Harry's Collectible Shows, which are happening at three dates throughout the rest of the year. These ones are down in Franklin, Massachusetts. And finally, there is a Collectibles Fair, which is actually happening in Grafton, Massachusetts on September 9th. So once again, if you're in any of those locations, you know, sort of south of Boston and west of Boston, you might want to check out any of these. I'll put as many links as I can down in the description so you can check them out for yourself. So all that being said, guys, um, before I show you the four comic books I got, if you want to support the channel, uh, go down, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. So the first thing I want to show you guys is actually my t-shirt. So my family always gives me a hard time because they all get me great t-shirts. I wear them on the channel, but I never show the whole t-shirt. You can only see the top half. I never show them off. Well, I definitely have to show this one off because it was a Father's Day gift from my kids and it's awesome. So you can see right here, it says, Daddy, you're as incredible as the Hulk, as amazing as Spider-Man, as mighty as Thor, as smart as Iron Man, and as honorable as Captain America. You're our superhero. How nice is that? This is my favorite t-shirt of all time. So thank you, kids. What a great Father's Day gift. I absolutely love it. I'm going to wear this in like half my videos. So let me jump into the comic books now. So growing up in the 80s and 90s, I had two big pop culture loves, Marvel Comics, of course, and Star Wars, of course, right? I absolutely loved Star Wars. In fact, probably there was many points in my life where Star Wars I loved even more than comic books. But the one thing I have never been into is Star Wars comic books. I, I've just never really gotten into them. I like the movies. You know, I like the uh, toys. I just didn't really like Star Wars comic books. And I know it's a big sector of the comic hobby nowadays. I I'm just not into the modern Star Wars stuff. I'm just not. Um, and as I've gotten older, um, despite the fact we have a lot more Star Wars content out there now, I don't like Star Wars as much as I did when I was a kid. Um, so it's kind of interesting that I picked up these next two books. What am I talking about? Talking about this. So this is The Mandalorian. Issue number one from 2022. This is part of an eight-part series. Uh, each one of these comic books is the comic book adaptation of one of the episodes of Mandalorian Season 1. And because of that, I guess this would be the first appearance of The Mandalorian, Din Djarin, uh, as well as the first cameo appearance 
of Grogu, you know, Baby Yoda. Um, and I also got issue number two, which I suppose would be the first full appearance of Grogu. This is why I think it's kind of silly, guys, the, the Star Wars ones. Because if they're characters that first premiered in a movie or a television show, it's not really their first appearance. I mean, these came out years after the show actually came out. It's different than, like, say, a uh, unique character or one made for the comic books because then their first appearance was, in fact, the comic book. That's not the case here. But um, I think these are pretty cool. I thought they were worth picking up. I really like the cover of this number one issue, especially. Um, so even though I'm not into Star Wars comic books, um, I thought they were worth picking up. So I may be at risk of getting my geek membership card revoked by saying this, but I like Star Wars. I like The Mandalorian but I think it's very average. I just think it's okay. Um, it has its moments. I mean, there are a couple of episodes, you know, certain scenes that are absolutely awesome. Certainly that first episode is amazing, um, but I've never just been like really wowed by this show. Um, and maybe it's because I'm just too critical. Um, you know, there's not too much that's happened in the last 30 years in Star Wars that I really love. I will say of all the Disney Plus shows, I didn't really like any of them except for Andor, which I thought was awesome. But The Mandalorian is totally fine, it's totally serviceable. Um, the reason I'm saying this is that, you know, if there are any of you out there that love The Mandalorian, that think it is awesome, um, and I have plenty of friends who have advocated for this, I'd love for you to go down in the comments and tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me why the show is absolutely amazing. I'd love to, you know, argue with you, but not argue, we'll have a conversation about it. I love interacting with all of you guys on anything related to, you know, geek stuff. Um, not just comic books, but also pop culture stuff. I'd love to hear from you. Start off down in the comments. I'm probably asking for it. I'm going to get a lot of angry Mandalorian lovers down there. Can't wait to hear from you guys. So this next comic book is uh, quite interesting, and it might even be a little controversial. And it's because this book had a ton of hype last year in 2022 when it first came out. What book am I talking about? This. So this is Black Panther number three from 2022, written by John Ridley. Um, this is actually the legacy 200th issue, meaning it's the 200th issue in the Black Panther title, looking at all the volumes going back. And why did this book get so much attention? It's because of the first appearance of this character, Tosin Oduye. Now, Tosin's actually a pretty neat character. He belongs to a Wakandan tribe that has vibranium tattoos, and that's where he gets his power. And when this book came out, people thought Tosin would be the next big thing. He might be the next Black Panther. He'd be the next Miles Morales, and people went nuts for this book. Lots of hype. Lots of FOMO in this book jumped up, especially the first printing of this book, which has a really cool Alex Ross cover. This is the second printing, the Manhanini variant. I actually like the character of Tosin. I think he's pretty neat, even though, as far as I know, they haven't really done much with him in the comic books. But I like this variant better than the first one because you can actually see his face right there. Um, very cool. I think he has a cool design. Now, I'm not someone who's into hype. I'm not someone who's into FOMO. I don't buy into the character of the week if it's like, you know, Spider-Boy or something. And I did not jump on this bandwagon when this character came out. But I got this book for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it was cheap. It was $5, which is cheaper than the newsstand price of this book. And two, um, I wanted to bring up something I think is kind of important. A lot of times when there is a hype book like this, a big spec book, people jump on it and it doesn't pan out. I feel like there's a lot of backlash towards the book and indirectly towards the character. I don't want people to forget, like, if the character's cool to begin with, like, if you like the character, don't let that discourage you from getting the book. I mean, you can let the price discourage you, I guess. Um, but I actually think Tosin's neat. I think he's really cool. I hope they do something with him. I think he's just a cool, new Wakandan character. And um, I don't care about the hype. If I get this book cheap, I'm going to get it because I like the cover. I think it's cool, and I'm happy to own it. So, um... Don't buy into FOMO, guys. It can be kind of silly sometimes. Don't overpay for books, but don't let it discourage you from getting the books and the characters that you like um, if it's someone you really enjoy the design or the concept behind. And uh, I didn't let it discourage me in this case. I was happy to wait a year for a uh, cheaper version of this book, and I'm happy to get this second print at a pretty good price. Uh, let me know down in the comments um, if you're someone who thinks Tosin's a cool character or if you bought that first print for a lot of money last year when it came out. I'd love to hear from you guys. So when I found this last comic book, I was pretty excited because it belonged to a storyline that I've already read before and enjoyed very much. The book that I got is this. So this is Providence number one. It's from 2015. It's the first part of a 12-part storyline written by Mr. Alan Moore and art by Jason Burroughs. Now, when this book came out in 2015, I was pretty excited for two reasons. One, it's written by Alan Moore. Alan Moore is an absolute comic book legend. Uh, not only did he write a lot of mainstream comics like Swamp Thing, but he wrote lots of graphic novels that have gone on to become 
uh, legendary parts of pop culture. Things like V for Vendetta and Watchmen. Obviously, he needs no introduction. But this storyline here jumped out to me even more because of the genre it's in. This is Alan Moore diving back into the world as an homage to the genre of H.P. Lovecraft in the Cthulhu mythos. So for those of you who don't know what all those crazy words I just said mean, H.P. Lovecraft was an author uh, actually from New England. He was from Providence, Rhode Island. And um, he didn't live very long and he wasn't very famous in his own time at all. But he wrote lots of uh, kind of horror stories that are based around this mythos he created where there are lots of eldritch alien horrors that are beyond human comprehension and understanding that are lurking just outside of our view and our reality. It's really creepy stuff. I really like it. And it's basically a whole mythos created on, you know, his stories, but also other people that have added to it. Other writers from the 20s and 30s, 40s and onward that have added to this collective idea of this, you know, arcane eldritch horrors outside of our reality. It's very cool. I really like it. I've always been into it. So when I heard Alan Moore was diving back into that genre, I had to have it. But I didn't get this comic book when it came out. Instead, I told my local comic book store I wanted the trade paperback. So I waited for these. So this is actually a hardcover. Um, very cool. I really like this book. And what's so great about these guys is not only is it a really cool, you know, graphic novel, but there's also like supplemental stuff in there. There's journal entries they have in here. They have newspaper articles. Um, they have maps you see right here, uh, which I think is really cool. It kind of really gets you into the uh, the whole storyline, immerses you more by having all these sort of extra little uh, Easter eggs and fun little things to read while you're going through the graphic novel. It's a really cool storyline. I really enjoyed it, especially as a Lovecraft lover. Um, there's lots of like Easter eggs and stuff in here that Alan Moore puts in there. Lots of callbacks to other older stories like uh, The King in Yellow. It's a story by Chambers. I don't know if anyone's ever read that, but you know, one of the stories in that is about a basically like a haunted play. Like people read the play and they go crazy. The beginning of this book talks about something very similar. It's a book that if you read it, you go nuts. You know, little like uh, sort of things in there for people who like the genre. So I was really into it, but I don't own the comic books um, and I'm sort of a completist. And because I liked it so much, Whenever I find these books cheap, I try to pick them up. I have never seen the first uh, book ever in the wild. So I was really happy to find it for a cheap price at this flea market. Had to pick it up. It's in great condition. And now I really want to fill out the rest of the 12 to add to my collection. So uh, let me know down in the comments, guys, if you are a lover of H.P. Lovecraft or the Cthulhu Mythos, or if you've read this uh, storyline. I would love to hear from any of you guys who like the same things as me. Like I said, I like all nerdy things, guys. Uh, so sign off down in the comments. Let me know if this is your cup of tea. It may not be for all of you, but if you haven't read it and you think you might, I highly recommend this story by Alan Moore. So there you go, guys. A quick video, which is good because you can tell I'm still getting over my cold and I'm losing my voice. Um, all four of these books, I think I got for $20. So I got them for five bucks each. I think that's a pretty great deal. Head on down to the comments and let me know which of my pickups you like the best. Uh, but mostly, I would love to have some conversations about these. Uh, let me know if you are a huge fan of The Mandalorian. Let me know if you love this show or you just think it's okay like I do. Uh, let me know what you think about Tosin. Are you one of those people that bought into the hype last year? Do you think he's a cool character? Do you think he's overhyped? I'd love to hear from you on that. And I definitely want to know if any of you out there are also fellow Cthulhu Lovecraft lovers or any of you have specifically read this series. I would love to hear from you. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you so very much for watching. Keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places. And I'll see you guys next time.